Hi, good morning to everyone. Uh, today, 8th March 20, 2022, Tuesday. Today is, uh, we are celebrating International Women's Day also. So I wish you all uh, a very happy International Women's Day. This is Kokila God on behalf of National Board for Quality Promotion, NBQP Quality Council of India. I would like to welcome you to this webinar on the topic, Understanding Automa uh, Automotive QMS Requirements for Implementation as per the ISO TS. 16949-2016 and ISO 9001-2015. A brief introduction about the program is I, uh, uh, ATF 16949 is Automotive Quality Management System, which improves the quality of a product or service to exceed customer expectation. It also sub, uh, supersedes requirement uh, specified in ISO TS 16949. Today we have uh, Mr. Nitin Malhotra, the faculty uh, he has already uh, you know conducted various uh, training program and uh, webinars for quality Con council of india uh, mr malotra has a bachelor degree in mechanical engineering and qualified for I um, iatf 16949 2016 and as 9100 2016 he has a very good uh, uh, and uh, he has uh, he had done more than 20, uh, 1200 training programs and uh, this is a two hours webinar with question answer session and at the end of the training program we are going to take question answer session uh, uh, question answer from the participant uh, 15 minutes time will be given to the, all the participants and in between if you have any questions so the chat uh, option is given there so you can write uh, your question there and uh, we'll one by one we'll uh, take up the questions um before we start this session uh, here is a brief introduction about quality council of india uh, qci is a pioneer initiative of government of india in partnership with indian industry it is apex uh, body uh, in the country as independent uh, autonomous organization under department of promotion and industry Intern internal trade dipt uh, dpit ministry of commerce and industry uh, qci leads national wide quality movement in india by involving all the stakeholders with encompass, uh, um, uh, emphasis on adherence to quality standard in products, system, and service for promoting and protecting national interests and health and safety of its citizen to achieve this uh, achieve this quality quality council of India playing a pivotal role in uh, propagating, adopting, and adherence adherence to quality standard in all important spheres like education, healthcare, environment, governance, social sector, infrastructure and uh, uh, such other area of organized activity that has a significant bearing in improving the quality of life of the citizen and in economic development in the of the uh, nation qci was created in 1997 as an autonomous non-profit organization by government of india through seed registration such as uh, ssjm cii fiki to establish and operate national accreditation structure the mission of qci to lead national wide quality movement in india by involving all the stakeholders the Department of Industry Policy and Promotion under, under Ministry of Commerce and Industry is a nodal point. The Chairman of QCI is appointed by Honorable Minister of uh, Honorable Prime Minister of India. At present, QCI is working under the dynamic leadership of Mr. Adil Jalalbhai, who is the QCI Chairman, and Dr. R.P. Singh, who is the Secretary General of QCI. Accreditation facilitated trade by way of establishing equivalence and global acceptance of certification, inspection, and testing being undertaken by various conformity assessment bodies in the area of quality, environment, food, safety, uh, etc. The uh, this was accomplished by two of the board of QCI, National Accreditation Board for Certification Bodies (NABCB) and National Accreditation Board for Testing and Collaboration Laboratories (NABL). As the scope of accreditation grew beyond the traditional boundaries of conformity assessment into fields such as healthcare, education, uh, QCI responded to this need by launching accreditation in these areas by in, uh, establish, establishing National Accreditation Board for Hospital and Healthcare Providers, NAPH, and National Accreditation Board for Education and Trading, NA. BET NABIT. Like accreditation board on uh, conformity assessment, the board of healthcare uh, for healthcare and education to have international linkage for global acceptance. Other important uh, tasks assigned to QCI has been to improve quality encompassing all the segments, including manufacturing, health, education, and public service. Mission of QCI to make national uh, wide quality a reality. 
a national board for quality promotion nbqp has endeavors with the task of taking this forward and coordinating with all the stakeholder to promote quality in their respective areas of influence nbqp is also running qci membership and uh, consultant uh, auditor registration scheme apart from this qci also has special project group that uh, work uh, with various ministry in uh, government and at a central level ppid is one of that the that kind of group uh, the, then we have padd project analysis and uh, documentation division we have z also zero defect and zero effect uh, qci has uh, a training capacity and building cell of which equis is a e learning port portal you can visit to our website www.qcn.org for more detail so now over to nitin sir thank you so much i wish you all a nice and interactive session over to nitin sir welcome sir uh, thanks kokla ma'am so good morning everyone hope i'm audible to each and everyone and uh, like i i have wish to start program without any further delay so uh, we we are basically going to have a discussion on a requirement which being referred as iatf 16949 so when it comes to this requirement what exactly it states and what exactly we are going to cover during this program uh, let me just have a quick introduction about this uh, session we would be covering key requirement of this standard which is basically being referred as iatf 16949 so nothing but we are going to have a basically a uh, few key requirements with respect to the standard uh, which can affect your implementation process so nothing but we are going to focus on implementation part where exactly we need to focus right so let me have presentation of uh, this requirement and let me start this requirement uh, with respect to uh, what we are going to cover during this session I hope my screen is visible to each and everyone. And now I shall start. I can see on the other screen like it's visible. Okay. So uh, when it comes to this IATF 16949, I wish to tell about the first requirement, which exactly means like uh, uh, the first thing is history of the standard. Let let us discuss about the history part. And when it comes to history requirement, uh, it basically uh, published in IAT, IATF 16949 first edition is published in 2016. so that's why it is being referred as iatf 16949 2016 so it is basically the first edition of the standard it is the first edition of the standard and earlier there used to be other standard which used to be used when it comes to uh, uh, this uh, requirement since iatf 16949 is being referred as automotive quality management system so it is basically a requirement which is specifically focusing on automotives So nothing but automotive quality management system. We used to have earlier there were there used to be another standard, which is superseded by IATF 16949. We can refer this as superseded by IATF. Earlier requirement was being referred as ISO oblique TS 16949. ISO oblique TS 16949. And the last version what we used to have that used to be third version, third edition of that standard. The standard ISO TS 16949 was first time published in year 1999. First time it was published in 1999. Then it was revised in year 2002, and again it was published in 2009. But in 2016, IATF itself published this requirement. So now this requirement, what we can understand, is completely owned by. IATF when it comes to IATF it's nothing but international automotive task force so the name suggests that we are going to have a requirement with respect to automotive industry so nothing but in terms of the requirement this would be more focusing on automotive so it is more focusing on automotive where exactly uh, how uh, quality management system shall be implemented so it has covered different requirement it is covering even customer requirement different customers are basically oems have been included in uh, formation of this requirement and when it comes to iatf 16 it has taken even inputs from certification bodies and auditors as well so when it comes to uh, every stock stakeholder was basically involved when it comes to implementation of uh, sorry formation of this standard requirement now if we talk about this iatf 16949 there is a goal defined for this standard and the goal says that we are focusing on 
three key requirements. We are focusing on three key requirements. One is continual improvement. The second one requirement is emphasizing defect prevention. And the third requirement is reduction of variation and weight. And standards suggest that we are going to have this requirement in the entire supply chain. An entire supply chain means even if you are OEM or tier one, tier two, tier three, tier four, we wish to implement this requirement in entire supply chain so that the entire supply chain can have continual improvement. The entire supply chain can emphasize on defect prevention and the entire supply chain can reduce variation and waste. So the standard is basically focusing on three key requirements. As per the standard, the goal or aim what we can refer, it is having an aim, continental improvement, emphasizing defect prevention and reduction of variation and waste. So this is basically the crux when it comes to the requirement that standard is having three key requirements where exactly the standard has been focused. So this is the goal first requirement which has been defined in the standard requirement. When it comes to IATF uh, 16949, it has basically different benefits where exactly few benefits of this requirement which we can mention it is basically going to enhance your customer satisfaction. It is basically going to provide you kind of sustainable development initiatives. You can have kind of risk and opportunities identified and when it comes to those requirements which you have identified, then you can have actions on those requirements which are going to be your risk and opportunities. And it would be definitely focusing on providing consistent products to the customer which meets your statutory and regulatory requirement, nothing but legal requirement. So the standard is very clear that it is focusing on customer, but it is also having key requirement with respect to that. OK, we would be focusing on statutory and regulatory requirement. And the uh, focus is that we would have consistent product which would be provided to customer. And that's the main aim of this requirement. So by having this standard, what we can say that we are going to have clear and uh, crisp idea that, OK, the customer is the foremost requirement for us. So customer is being focused when it comes to this standard. So the benefit would be that your customer would be highly satisfied and we can basically exceed the customer expectation requirement. So that is something which we can refer as basically benefits of IATF. Now, this is the one of key requirement which I wish to discuss. This is about what is the scope of IATF. Now, there used to be many requirements which I had seen and uh, there exactly doesn't matter that whether you are for, uh, making product or not or whatever you are doing. It's basically having that, okay, you have to establish a system and auditor can audit. Now, this standard is very much clear about few requirements and I wish to tell only automotive organizations can have IATF standard. Only automotive organizations. Now, when it comes to automotive organization, it has been divided into two different categories. One is which being referred as on-road vehicles and the other one is being referred as off-road vehicles. So when it comes to the standard, this is basically focusing on on-road vehicles. It is not having any interest in off-road vehicles. Standard is very much clear that, okay, the company is having manufacturing process and they are basically manufacturing product for on-road vehicles are only eligible for IATF. So now when it comes to off-road vehicle, if we really want to understand, the off-road vehicles are few examples I can refer. One, the biggest uh, vehicle manufacturer which we can refer that, okay, it is not covered under scope of IATF. It is not covered under I scope of IATF. The biggest organization we can refer is tractor industries. So tractor industries are not part of IATF. If you are making parts only for tractors, then you won't be eligible to get IATF certification. Mining equipment, something like construction mining equipment, companies like JCBs cannot opt for IATF certification. So if you are having manufacturing facilities and you are providing products to JCB kind of companies, even if those are there, then you cannot think of having certification to IATF one six nine four. So it is very clear that you are having on road vehicles. On road vehicles means something like I can refer two wheelers, three wheelers, four wheelers, commercial vehicle like bus, truck are kind of vehicles 
where exactly this standard can be implemented. So if you wish to have IATS certificate, then you shall have someone from this area, two-wheeler, three-wheeler, four-wheeler, commercial vehicle like bus or truck, then only this standard can be implemented and you can obtain certification of this requirement. Okay, you can implement this requirement, but the biggest thing is you won't be eligible to get certificate. You won't be eligible to get certificate. For certification, you have to have at least one customer which is part of basically two-wheeler, three-wheeler, four-wheeler or commercial vehicle, bus and trucks. Now, when it comes to this requirement, I specifically mentioned two or three key requirements, but I can say one is automotive organization, then it has been divided into on-road vehicles and off-road vehicles. Now, third requirement is, which I've already specified in earlier uh, like statement, if you are having basically a manufacturing facility, then only you can basically have certification to this requirement. If it is, uh, Manoj has asked something, I would like to ans answer this requirement in the meantime. Helmet industry is, if it is basically, I would specifically refer, it is basically part of your vehicle being supplied and it is basically part of your BOM of your OEM. Then only you can have that. Okay, Manoj? It can be implemented at that industry and yes, is it applicable to electric vehicles? So I would say yes, it is, right? So yes. Now, when it comes to the requirement, you have to have a manufacturing facility, then only you can get this certification. So manufacturing facilities supplying to automotive segment. So that is something which is the crucial requirement. So you have to have manufacturing. Even if you are having a small assembly line where exactly, say you are having assembly line where exactly uh, the one screw is being basically uh, tightened up. That means you have eligibility to go for certification with respect to IATF. So you have to have some kind of value addition to the product. So you can have some kind of value addition to the product. So that means requirement. Uh, 16949 is a serial number, uh, Pankaj. So 16949 is a serial number, nothing more than it. So it is basically a unique identification number given to the standard. So ISO having a basically requirement where exactly they are given to basically. Uh, so tool room supplying to Honda, no. Uh, tool room means you are making a tool and being supplied to Honda. Tool is not going to be part of your vehicle. Not going to be part of your vehicle. So it is basically cannot be something uh, considered. Okay. Okay, Manoj. Next, I would like to discuss about, you need to cover all of your supporting functions wherever they are located, wherever they are located, means you are having some supporting functions and those can be something like you are having some corporate office where people like marketing or say uh, business development sales or uh, your uh, uh, some other areas, strategic planning, um, MR function, are sitting, you need to cover in that audit itself. You cannot say that that is a different organization. All supporting functions, wherever they are located, shall be covered. So you will get certificate for that manufacturing location and the location where you are having supporting function would be referred as remote location or support location, what we can refer and would be part of your certification cycle. So when it comes to uh, basically certification, so that is something need to be covered. You cannot have a separate certificate for supporting functions. Like I've just mentioned, you're having some location where your corporate office is there and you, are, you do not have any manufacturing facility over there. You cannot have certificate of that 
location certificate to that location would be part of a manufacturing location right oems can have permissible exclusion so oems wish to go for this requirement or not wish to go for that requirement that is something is their decision generic bulk material at least one automotive customer so basically you can have a number of products but at least out of those one is automotive customer then only you can get iatf one part being supplied to at least either of the companies which we have already discussed which are part of on road vehicle shall be there and if you are selling to after market then you are not eligible for iatf unit selling to after market are not eligible for iatf i am making product as per the specification of say maruti or honda but i am not supplying to them basically my part is being sold in open market i am selling it to say kashmiri gate in in uh, delhi there is a market being referred as kashmiri gate so if you are selling it to kashmiri gate sorry even if your design specifications are the similar which are there in automotive company you cannot get iatf so part shall be something which shall reach to oem which shall reach to oem even if you are tier 4 but your part is being shipped to tier 3 tier 3 to tier 2 tier 2 to tier 1 and then it is reaching to customer uh, oem yes you can get iatf certification uh, i've got another query is iatf 16949 is equivalent version of ts i did implement for caterpillar engine plant so uh, yes iatf is equivalent version i would refer it that ts16949 is superseded by iatf16949 so now ts16949 is converted to iatf16949 okay so the companies who are having service and maintenance if they have some kind of manufacturing of product and then servicing of that yes otherwise no so manufacturing is mandatory to be there manufacturing is mandatory so it is basically manufacturing and then servicing of that right then yes if that is there you can get okay kishor i hope you, uh, your uh, question is answered right so let me let me uh, move to the basically next part this is the scope of iatf when it comes to another requirement it is application of iatf now when it comes to application there is one requirement where exactly we can think of having exclusion we can think of having exclusion if that requirement is not being performed by us then we can have exclusion we are having permission to exclude that and that requirement is being referred as product design and development product design and development so when it comes to iat standard it says design and development is of two type one is product design another one is process design one is product design another one is a process design so the companies who are not having product design can exclude this requirement but it is mandatory to include manufacturing process design so now you cannot say that i do not have process design since already i have mentioned in the previous slide that men only companies into manufacturing can go for iatf so that means you need to design your process manufacturing process so manufacturing process design need to be performed by organization you cannot think of exclude that requirement now exclusion is only permitted being referred as product design and development just for your information product design is part of 8. three section of iatf 16949 so 8.3 section nothing but design and development and where exactly we are having two key requirement one being referred as product design another being referred as process design so the companies are into product uh, sorry uh, men, uh, only process designing can exclude product designing now it doesn't mean that okay i am responsible for product design and i am eligible to exclude no if you are basically designing your products designing your product means if i am coming to your organization and if i 
ask you about why this specification is this much, why this uh, tolerance being kept is this value, why this is the length being kept, why this material is chosen. So something like that activity is being performed by you, then only I can ask about this requirement. Otherwise, you can straight away say, I got the drawing from customer, I got the design data from customer, and based on that drawing or design data, I've developed my manufacturing process. I've developed my manufacturing process, so nothing but manufacturing process design is applicable to each and every one. Only exclusion possible is product design and development, but if you are having facility product for a product design and it's being performed by you, you are not having authority to exclude this requirement so you can exclude only if you are exclude only if this requirement being performed by someone else not being performed by your organization okay now uh, when it comes to iatf it is again based on the same requirement being referred as process approach and risk based thinking so the adoption is basically process approach and risk based thinking in this standard it is basically uh, focusing on effectiveness of a quality management system. So whenever the audit is being performed, the, very, uh, the auditor would be uh, interested to verify whether quality management system is effectively implemented and it is having continual improvement in the organization. And the last requirement which we have already discussed that customer focus would be there and it would be that we need to meet or exceed customer requirements. So that is something basically uh, standard which is being promoted by standard. Now, uh, the question is, uh, what is process approach? The normal thing with being asked, it is basically a kind of requirement which being specified and standard that we need to use. Uh, uh, audit, a standard has mentioned that we shall have internal auditors. We shall have internal auditors who shall perform system audit, quality management system. And the standard has mentioned that auditors, internal auditors who are going to perform a quality management system related internal audit shall be competent. In case of clause number 7.2.3, which is being referred as internal auditor competency, it has been mentioned that system auditor shall be competent. System auditor shall be competent. Now, when it comes to that competency requirement, I wish to tell that Standard has given competency requirement with respect to system auditor. And out of those requirement, one requirement being referred as understanding of auditing based on process approach, including risk-based thinking. So nothing but when it comes to this requirement, uh, auditing requirement shall focus on your process approach as well as risk-based thinking. So process approach and risk-based thinking shall be used while doing auditing. Uh, Murli has asked, uh, asked, sir, I'm from steel plant, can we exclude product design clause? Uh, when it comes to steel plant, so steel is basically having some specifications which being used by us and being product. Uh, now, now, if I ask Murli whether you are deciding that, okay, I would be keeping this much of uh, hardness or this is going to be UTS, it is there in some great specification and you are making part as per so nothing but I can refer it as something like uh, your processing industry. So you can exclude product design. You can exclude product design requirement. Okay, Murli. Uh, unknown user has mentioned what is the evidence of same competency. You have to have basically evaluation of competency. So the standard has demanded in 7.2.3 clause that internal auditor competency shall be evaluated. So we have to have a procedure for that requirement and it needs to be where exactly we need to have. So whenever, uh, how, how you can refer this requirement, basically first is the person shall be knowing about process approach, the person shall be knowing about risk-based thinking and then you have to have data of auditing where exactly we uh, say, uh, I'm coming in next year, so the, definitely that internal auditor would have performed few audits. So you have to have history of those audits and based on that, you need to evaluate that requirement. Okay, so basically it needs to be re-evaluated. It needs to be evaluated. Evaluation can be by means of some examination or some other uh, way which you can adopt. Okay.
so uh, why we uh, required basically process approach is basically going to add value to the organization because we generally say that we need to have identification of processes then these processes are going to be managed and the critical requirement being referred is how those processes are having linkage with each other how those processes are having linkage to each other so you have to identify that how your processes which you processes you have identified how those processes are having interlinkage with each other that needs to be identified when it comes to the process approach requirement right so when it comes to this is basically the process approach requirement being presented on your screen how it would look like is nothing but process where process is being defined as set of interrelated activities which transform inputs into outputs so nothing but you can see on the screen inputs have been identified on the left side outputs are identified on the right side and then we have mentioned one on the one side that procedure need to be identified and then we have mentioned that you need to have a criteria where you shall have objectives for monitoring and measurement and then when it comes to monitoring and measurement objective what we being referred is referred as two type of objective one is effectiveness and another one is efficiency we have two type of objective now one is being referred as effectiveness and another being referred as efficiency what we mean by effectiveness is ability to achieve desired result so nothing but we are measuring whether the result being expected from us have been achieved or not so that is being referred as effectiveness and what is the meaning of efficiency is basically resources required to achieve desired output resources required to achieve desired output so now we have resources nothing but efficiency formula is being referred as output divided by input output divided by input in case of effectiveness we were discussing only about output in case of efficiency now we are discussing output with respect to input so how much input is being used to get that output is being monitored being referred as efficiency so we need to have at least two type of objective one being referred as effectiveness another being referred as efficiency effectiveness is foremost and you have to go for that requirement efficiency is something which you can plan with respect to the requirement okay now if we go by a few terms being used in standard i wish to tell about that there is a term being referred as shell which means it is a mandatory requirement of standard mandatory requirement of standard there is a term being referred as should which means it is a recommendation which means it's a recommendation there is another term being referred as may which means permission so permission is given can indicates that it is a possibility or a capability requirement and last but not the least not is given it is for guidance purpose can something be considered as an example or clarifying some requirement so clarification or example of a requirement so not is given in that purpose now if we go by the standard requirement there are seven management principle in case of ISO TS16949 which used to be used in earlier version there used to be eight management per, uh, principles this time the standard has revised it to seven management principles so there are seven management principles and on your screen you can find that customer focus is there leadership is there engagement of people is being referred process approach is being referred and improvement is being referred evidence based decision making and relationship i just wish to tell about few changes from the previous version earlier version yes it used to have customer focus yes it used to have leadership now third is being referred as engagement of people if we compare it with the version iso ts16949 it used to refer it as involvement of people it used to refer it as involvement so rather than involvement the standard has used engagement now if we talk about engagement requirement you can relate with this requirement now when it comes to involvement that okay i'd ask okay come and join this meeting now in case of engagement the people have joined the meeting and i'm assigning them some with some kind of work so nothing but some responsibilities authorities are being assigned that means engagement so i'm engaging them with some work i'm engaging them with some work being referred as engagement of people process approach used to be there in the previous version it is there in uh, this version improvement used to be there in previous version it is there in 
this version. Now, evidence-based decision making. If you uh, uh, read this term, evidence-based decision making. I'll, I'll come to uh, stakeholder involvement just a moment. Evidence-based decision making. Earlier, there used to be two key requirements. One being referred as systematic approach to management and another being referred as factual approach to decision making. Both the terms have been merged together and now it is being referred as evidence-based decision making. So earlier, there used to be two management things for systematic approach to management, factual approach to management, right? So that is something being referred basically evidence-based decision making. And another term is being referred as relationship management. The earlier term being referred as mutually beneficial supplier relationship. Now we have a bigger term. We have a larger uh, basically focus area. And now it is referred as relationship management. When it comes to relationship management, you can write down that it is focusing on interested parties it is focusing on interested parties so interested parties relationship management is being focused so organization shall have basically good relationship with every interested parties so uh, the person who has asked is, is is it stakeholders involvement so i would wish to tell the stakeholder word is basically replaced with a bigger term and which is being referred as interested parties so interested parties is a term being used in this standard, okay? So a relationship shall be maintained with your interested parties. So that is basically being focused when it comes to standard. So relationship management is a term being used, which earlier used to be mutually beneficial supplier. So we were having focus only on supplier. This time we are focusing on basically interested parties. Right now, if we talk about the standard requirement, it is having similar structure being used by ISO, referred as high level structure. Since IATF 16949, relationship with supplier, customer, and employees, I would say better you use this term as relationship management with interested parties. And interested parties will include supplier, will include customer, will include employees, will include management, and so on, right? Uh, now, when it comes to IATF 16949, it says that we uh, are adopting the same structure being used in ISO 9001. So, I wish to tell that IATF 16949, IATF 16949 is basically adopting ISO 9001 requirement. It is having a base requirement of ISO 9001. So when it comes to ISO 9001 is having one to 10 clauses being referred over here and the similar clauses being adopted by IATF. So when it comes to high level structure is having clause number one as scope, clause number two is normative reference, third is terms and definition, Fourth one is being referred as context of the organization. Fifth being referred as uh, leadership. Sixth being referred as planning. Seventh being referred as support. Eighth being referred as operation. Ninth being referred as performance evaluation. And tenth being referred as improvement. And I would just would like to tell, now this structure is common with ISO 9001, ISO 14001, ISO 45001. So nothing but... The requirement is defined in a way that you can integrate these requirements, this IATF standard with other standards as well. So that is the best thing that you can integrate IATF standard requirement with ISO 14001 or ISO 45001. So that permission you can obtain. The only reason is because the structure is similar. So it is promoting that we shall actually think of integration. We shall actually think of integration. Pankaj is uh, basically uh, referring what does mean high level structure, please explain. Uh, I'll just give a simple uh, requirement that every standard in ISO which being referred as a full fledged standard or complete standard is having basically a, a team which is forming that requirement being referred as a TC, TC technical committee. 
So nothing but ISO 9001 one is having TC 176. I, ISO 14,000 one is having TC 207. So every standard is having different themes. Now, earlier to that, earlier to that, what was happening that those teams were allowed to form the standard as per their will. Nothing but ISO 9001, 2008 used to have 1 to 8 clauses. In case of ISO 14,001, it used to be 1 to 4 clauses. So there was a difference in terms of clauses. Now, uh, you can relate this ISO uh, uh, steering management, steering committee basically referred this requirement that this is a problem. This is a problem because ISO, International Organization for Standardization, nothing but it is for standardization of a requirement. So why we are having two different structures being used in different standards? So they form this structure. So nothing but the you can refer it management level team has basically defined this structure. So that is why it is being referred. Now those uh, team CFT team, nothing but technical committees are not allowed to change this structure. So that is why it is being referred as high level structure. That high level has given this structure shall be used by committees who are forming these standard requirements. Okay, Pankaj. Uh, Virinder is asking, is IATF is an extension of ISO 9001? So, uh, Virinder, I would say yes, IATF is basically having ISO 9001 2015 plus automotive specific requirements. Plus, so I'm mentioning there are few additional requirements which are specifically for automotives being published in IATF and otherwise in other requirements. Standard has referred ISO 9001. So if you'll open the standard, if you'll open the standard, where 4.1 clause, like I'm just giving an example, 4.1 clause, the name is the understanding the organization in its context. They have referred CISO 9001-2015. So you can refer that, that okay, ISO 9001-2015 shall be used. If there is additional requirement that is written in IATF. So yes, IATF is an extension of ISO 9001-2015. ISO 9001 plus supplemental requirements to automotive. Okay. Uh, we will be uh, mailing it. No issues. Okay. So let me uh, quickly go about few requirements with respect to clauses. So nothing but uh, if we are forming the standard requirement, uh, we does it doesn't affect that if you're um, uh, like uh, product, what uh, basically product being manufactured, what services being provided, what is the size of organization doesn't matter. So we can have the standard requirement either if uh, we are having any kind of product with us or whatever the size of organization. So even an organization having two, three, four, five percent with them or two thousand, three thousand, four thousand, five thousand percent them with them, IATF will remain same. IATF standard requirement will remain same. Okay. So nothing but IATF is having common requirement. Now, if we go to normative reference, if we go to normative reference, standard says there are three key requirements. One being referred in ISO 9001, being referred as ISO 9000-2015. So it is not ISO 9001. It is part of ISO 9000 family. It is part of ISO 9000 family. There is a standard. Number is 9000. It is not 9001. 9001 is the requirement being implemented by organizations against which you can get a certificate. That ISO 9001 is actually part of IATF standard. Actually part of IATF standard. Now we are referring it. We are referring this requirement that, okay, if you wish to require, uh, implement this standard, then this standard something can be ISO 9000 2015. So you can refer this. It is having few definitions. Like if you wish to understand about risk, if you wish to understand about quality, if you wish to understand about quality management system, then you need to read the standard being referred as ISO 9000 2015. And the name of this standard is quality management system fundamentals and vocabulary. So this is a standard where you will find n number of definitions and you have to refer that for understanding those terms. So and to, if you wish to understand about quality, if you wish to understand about quality management system as a term, if you wish to understand about the term risk, 
then you need to refer ISO 9000-2015. Then in case of IATF, in case of IATF, there are two annexures given. There are two annexures given. One annexure being referred as annexure A. One being referred as annexure A being referred as control plan. So if you wish to have basically control plan in your organization, then you shall basically refer an extra A. Then you shall refer an extra A. So an extra A is a requirement for control plan. An extra A is a basically requirement for control plan. Then there is another attachment given to IATS standard being referred as an extra B. An extra B is basically referred as bibliography. Bibliography is nothing but you can refer it as list of other requirements. So they have made a complete list of different requirements published by a few organizations. Published by a few organizations. I wish to tell about name of those organizations which you can relate with. And you can refer those requirements as that supporting organizations to IATF. Nothing but it can be AIAG, it can be VDA, it can be NCI, it can be SMMT, it can be another organization being referred as fear so there are different organizations who are supporting to iatf now if you wish to understand that okay which requirement are there you need to go to that bibliography say i'm giving an example as per iatf standard it says that you need to perform msa you need to perform msa in case of clause number 7.1.5.1.1 .1, it says you need to perform MSA, measurement system analysis. Measurement system analysis. Now, if you wish to perform that MSA requirement, it means it means that we shall use some document which can give us a fair idea what is MSA as actually requirement. So there is a manual published by AIAG. There is a manual published by AIAG Automotive Industries Action Group. That document is part of bibliography. So you can have a list of other reference documents. So bibliography, you can write down as list of other reference documents published by. Now I'm referring again few names. AIAG, SMMT, VDA, ANFIA, FIEV. These five organizations being referred as supporting organizations to IATA. Supporting organizations to IATA. These are few automotive associations in different countries. AIAG is part of USA. SMMT is part of UK. Uh, FIAG is part of France. NFI is part of Italy. Uh, VDA is part of Germany. So those are basically forming different requirements and those can be referred in this bibliography. So bibliography is given as a reference for us that, okay, you can refer. This is good for us. See, there, there is a CQA standard for heat treatment. There is a CQA standard for uh, plating. So if you are into plating industry, then CQA can be a good document which can help you, which can really help you. So those lists are there in an Excel B. And if you feel that, yes, this is a good requirement for me, you can obtain that requirement and then you can implement that requirement. Okay. Now, there are terms and definition clause being referred as third section. Third section is basically being referred as terms and definition. And if we talk about the standard, it is having, now I'm specifically referring IATF. I'm not referring ISO 9000. There are definitely many requirements in ISO 9001 defined and standard. Now, we are referring 41 different definitions are part of IATF 16949. So, IATF 16949 is having 41 terms defined in clause number 3. Clause number 3 is having 41 definitions. Now, if we compare it with TS16949, if we compare it with TS16949, so just for your information, TS used to have 12 de definitions. Now, 29 more are added by IATF. So, TS16949-2009 used to have 12 definitions. And in case of IATF, now we are having 29 more definitions than what used to be there in TS16949. Few 
quick uh, definitions we can refer like accessory parts so nothing but uh, we usually use this term accessories we are going to accessory shop you you might have heard about it so customer specified additional component that are either mechanically or electronically connected to the vehicle or power train before delivery to the final customer right so uh, when it comes to iatf it has given a clear scope that if you are having uh, your vehicle as uh, say a music player okay so that means it is accessory okay it is connected to the vehicle by your oem so that is accessory part so it can be mechanical or it can be electric electronically connected okay then we have a term referred as after market product so after market product is replacement parts not procured or released released by an oem so when it comes to this requirement we need to refer that we are having some replacement parts but those are not procured or released by oem so those will not be part of iatf you remember in case of uh, scope we had mentioned if you are supplying to aftermarket you cannot get iatf certificate so nothing but in this clause it has been mentioned that these parts are not either procured or not being released by oem that means it is a replacement part and it is aftermarket part okay now there is a, refer, a term being referred as challenge part parts known to spe specification and calibration and traceable to standard with expected result pass for that are used to validate the functionality of an error proofing device or check fixture you are having some fixture and you are having two different component what is one is being referred as okay one being referred as ng you have put uh, that part in fixture and machine has given alarm that okay this is okay part you are starting your machine and you are having ng part when you applied that part in fixture your machine detected that as ng that means you are validating your process before before start of your manufacturing activity so that is being referred as challenge part or master part right there is a term very common being used csr customer specific requirement these are referred as supplemental requirement linked to a specific clause of iatf so iatf is having different clauses and out of those requirement if i uh, your customer is having something specific re related requirement which is additional to iatf i'm just giving an example say standard has mentioned that you we need to define a retention policy we need to define retention policy how much retention can be there it is given in only one condition and another con condition it has referred that you have to follow customer you have to follow statutory and regulatory requirement in one requirement they have mentioned something like tpap requirements so if you are having tpap records with you then you need to retain for product life plus service life plus one year that is given in standard now if you open your uh, uh, supplier manual of your customer nothing but say if you are supplying to honda you can have honda supplier manual so honda has mentioned in many requirement as 20 years in case of baruti you will find written as 11 years that means this is something supplemental requirement or additional requirement being specified by customer which is not part of iatf standard so that is being referred as customer specific requirement okay uh anil ji it is basically uh, yes if those music system being supplied to oem if it is being supplied by oem and the car is having that music system supplied by some uh, music system manufacturer so yes it can have only the requirement is that part shall be routed through oem okay now there are three four different terms which i can quickly refer dfa de design for assembly another is dfm design for manufacturing another one is dfma design for manufacturing and assembly dfma being referred and another is design for six sigma i can just quickly go through those requirement design for assembly is basically a requirement that products are designed with ease of assembly consideration so nothing but that products are designed in a way that we will have ease of assembly 
ease of assembly so when you are when your operator is assembling those parts those process shall be easy for assembly right so that is being referred as design for assembly another being referred as design for manufacturing which says that products are easily and economically manufactured so we are focusing on that part where exactly we are discussing right another is design for manufacturing and assembly design for manufacturing and assembly where both the terms assembly and manufacturing terms are merged together now we are having process where exactly we would produce with higher throughput with improved quality and with ease of assembly that is being referred as a requirement being referred as dfma and another term is dfss design for six sigma is basically kind of techniques being used while designing of product process that meets your customer requirement and it can produce parts to the six sigma quality level so we have lesser rejections we have lesser defects that is being focused by dfss so that is being referred when it comes to different terms now there is another term being referred as laboratory scope it is having three key requirement when it comes to laboratory scope your organization if having internal laboratory shall have a laboratory scope that is given in standard now if you are having a laboratory then you need to define a laboratory scope and it shall contain three key requirement first one is what tests can be performed another one is which equipments to be used for those tests and third one is whatever the standards <laughs> or work instructions are available for those uh the test need to be listed down in that document being referred as laboratory scope another being referred as no trouble found it is basically whenever you are replacing your parts and then you are analyzing that and it says that it is good part it is not basically being referred as that there is a problem in that part being referred as no trouble found another one is outsourced process that is means that actually that activity need to be performed by us actually this needs to be performed but we have routed through someone else so that external organization being referred as outsourced process like i am producing one part where exactly i am needing heat treatment i am needing plating i am needing uh, powder coating and i have outsourced it so nothing but that organization who is doing job work for me being referred as outsourced process then it is related to uh, th there are few terms related to maintenance periodic overhaul predictive maintenance preventive maintenance ppm so these are kind of terms for uh, basically maintenance process so that is being referred when it comes to the requirement so there are all together 41 different definitions given in iats standard need to be basically used by us need to be used by us and we need to refer those requirement another requirement now i am moving to the clause number 4 where exactly i would be referring there are few, few, few uh, basically if you go by the clause number 4.1 4.2 4.3 4.4 4, there are kind of four clauses where we have extended requirements as well so i'm just uh, summarizing those requirement the first requirement is in case of fourth clause it says that we shall identify all our internal and external issues which are relevant to my quality management system so to address this requirement i would like to tell that actually you shall think of those issues which can affect my quality management system which can affect my quality management system either those can be affected in positive way or those can be affected in negative way both shall be considered to so be generally refer that you can perform swot analysis over there you can perform swot analysis murli has asked please explain premium freight okay premium freight is additional freight paid other than the agreed excess freight paid other than the agreed nothing but you are you have an agreement with your customer that i am going to ship 800 parts in a vehicle 800 parts in a vehicle in one day okay now one day one vehicle 800 parts some day what has happened that you are not having 800 number of parts ready with you there is some issue with your process and now you are having only 200 300 400 number of parts and you use that vehicle and you had shipped those 400 number parts and again that vehicle has came and has taken another 400 number of parts 
now uh, earlier to that actually you were shipping 800 number of parts in one vehicle now you have shipped 800 number parts in two vehicle that means we have incurred additional with respect to the freight so that is being referred as premium freight okay murli right now uh, second requirement is being referred as that we need to identify interested parties now the question is what we mean by interested party what we mean by interested party the definition is given like person or organization which can affect or can be affected by which can affect or can be affected by organizational decision so you are having some decision or an activity right so that is something being referred as requirement so now you have to identify all your relevant interested parties so which party which party which person or organization who can affect your quality management system shall be identified second is that whatever their needs and expectations are shall be identified so interested parties can have some needs and expectation from us those need to be listed down see if you are not knowing about those requirement that what your interested party what your supplier what your customer is expecting from you then you won't be able to meet those requirements so standard as are that you shall have list of your interested parties and you shall have list of their requirements which can be relevant to quality management system uh sorry pankaj i won't be able to refer any sigma level with respect to indian automobile industry i i'm, I'm personally not knowing it and never checked actually uh, see uh, i i usually say that every organization can have a different sigma level so uh, i'm not going to specify any value for that sorry because i am not knowing it okay uh, next is organization shall determine the boundaries and applicability of the quality management system to establish its scope so now third requirement is that you have to define scope of your organization now if you are defining scope of your organization you shall consider three key requirement you shall consider three key requirement one being referred as internal and external issues another being referred as interested party requirement and third one being referred as products processes and services of the organization so whenever you are defining scope of your organization you have to consider three key requirement internal external issue which we have already discussed first point interested party requirement the second requirement what we discussed and third one is whatever products being manufactured by us whatever manufacturing processes being used by us and whatever services being provided by us shall be referred while defining your scope so i organization shall define scope and it shall have a documented scope it, so scope shall be documented and you need to identify exclusion as well so you have to identify scope of your organization as well as you need to identify exclusion with respect to your automotive quality management system so i'm having a very simple question now which requirement of iatf 16949 can be excluded which requirement of iatf 16949 can be excluded you can write in chat option right i'm moving further you can write in the meantime let me see whatever i have mentioned if you are able to pankaj has mentioned something but i'll come to it balwant has also answered something it is not correct pankaj balwant it's not correct yes murli has answered now i'm referring it please 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 remember it 8.3 is design and development and already have mentioned design is of two type design and development is of two type one being referred as product design and development another being referred as manufacturing process design and development 
so only product design requirement of 8.3 so i cannot exclude entire 8.3 section i cannot exclude entire 8.3 section only product design and development part of 8.3 can be excluded manufacturing process design and development part of 8.3 cannot be excluded okay another requirement being referred as we already have discussed about process approach i had shown some diagram so you have to have some kind of a document where process approach shall be identified so standard say that processes shall be determined and how those processes are interacting with each other so that interaction shall be defined so there are two key requirement i wish to tell one is identify your processes and second one is determine process interaction determine process interaction there is another key requirement where exactly i would like to tell that organization shall have documented processes for management of product safety related products and manufacturing process so now if you go by standard requirement there are 21 such requirements 21 such requirement where standard has mentioned this term documented process it means procedure it means procedure so as per iatf there are 21 requirement of iatf standard where mandatory a procedure is demanded shall mandatory documented process procedure now there is first requirement where we need to have a mandatory procedure and that is referred as product safety that is being referred as product safety so all together in standard iatf you will find 21 such places where a mandatory procedure is demanded where a mandatory procedure is demanded so out of those 21 this is the first requirement where iatf has man, uh, uh, like made mandatory to have a procedure to have a procedure uh, i have already mentioned i am not going to comment on this six sigma and kind of values okay now i'm going to uh, leadership requirement when it comes to leadership requirement it says that top management shall be committed to implement this quality management system and to ensure that commitment they need to provide resources they need to have kind of requirement that okay if anything goes out of control with respect to quality management system the accountability will remain with top management the standard says that overall accountability of a quality management system will remain with the top management will remain with top management standard has asked few different policies in this requirement so iatf standard has mentioned that there are three different policies which will focus on <laughs> corporate responsibility which will focus on corporate responsibility and those three policies are anti bribery policy employees code of conduct and third one is ethics escalation policy uh, one is referring deepak is referring ppt slide is not visible i can see it is visible deepak it is visible okay uh now now uh, what i was mentioning there are three sir. okay thank you so one is anti bribery policy another is employee code of conduct and third one is ethics escalation policy when it comes to ethics escalation policy when it comes to ethics escalation policy it can be referred as whistle blower policy whistle blower policy whistle means city so nothing but city by your means you are escalating it to higher authorities ethically something wrong is happening and i am knowing about it so i shall have a right that i can escalate to higher authorities so that appropriate action 
actions can be taken. Okay. Another is you have to have a quality policy. You have to have a quality policy. So organization shall have a quality policy with them. Organization shall have a quality policy with them. Okay. So quality policy shall be documented. Another one is that organization shall uh, the top management shall ensure the responsibilities and authority. So now I would refer to three key documents, key requirement over here. One is that organization shall have some kind of organization chart with them. Then so the organization chart shall be known to everyone that okay, what is my position, what is my role in the organization. Another one is JD's job descriptions shall be defined. So organization shall have JDs with respect to those roles being identified in the organization chart. So that has to be uh, something which need to be identified. Another requirement is that earlier we used to have a term being referred as MR. So I would say something similar to MR shall be there. Who can be it? What designation you want to give? How many person can have that responsibility? I'm not going to say, but I would better say that MR as a term is not used in standard, but the responsibilities and authorities are similar to previous version. Are similar to previous version means this term is actually which being used in previous version is not used. The only thing is now term is not used. The only reason is what is going to be the name of a designation is actually a right of your top management. So let top management say that it is MR. Let top management say that I will say it is system coordinator, system in charge. So name doesn't matter to me. What matters to me is nothing but work being identified. So responsibilities and authorities which were there in MR function in previous version are specifically defined in this standard as well. So ideally, MR is required. Then standard says that we shall have someone who will ensure that customer requirements are understood are being met by us are understood and are being met by us. So customer requirements shall be identified. Oh, sorry, uh, customer requirements to address that requirement. We, earlier we used to have a term being referred as customer representative. Now again, standard has not used that term. So it is your choice whether you want to use this term as customer representative or some other term. What matters is basically the work being assigned over there. So nothing but we have to ensure that customer requirements are understood and being met by us. Another is earlier we used to have a requirement being referred as responsibility for quality. Responsibility for quality. Now that term is modified and being referred as responsibility and authority for product conformity. So who is ensuring product conformity? In general, most of the organization used to have quality function. Most of the uh, organization used to have quality function. So this is more of a requirement where quality function related requirements are identified. And it has given one authority. If you read the standard, only one authority is given in standard and that authority is that in case of known conformity in case of a known conformity and to initiate action they are authorized to stop production or stop shipment so the person having responsibility to ensure product conformity are authorized to stop production or stop shipment. In earlier version TS16949, it used to be stop production only. Now IATF has added. Excuse stop me, sir. Shipment. Nitin, sir. Excuse me. Uh, yes, uh, Mr. Sridhar, yes. you have, if you have any questions, you can write in the chat box, sir. Thank you. Uh, so the organization basically, uh, in, in sorry, previous version, we used to have only stop production as a requirement. But in IATF, they have added a shipment requirement as well. Shipment requirement. So shipment even can be stopped. And those person who are working, who are basically taking care of product conformity are authorized for that. Authorized for that. 
okay now uh, there is a requirement which is in six section and i wish to tell about that this is the very crucial clause of this requirement where i'd seen many non conformities and i wish to tell about different kind of issues which i'd seen during the discussion itself now standard has asked that we have to identify risk and opportunity simplest requirement we had already discussed that risk and opportunity shall be identified so we have to have a system where risk and opportunities are identified risk and opportunities are identified the another requirement standard has demanded that the risk and opportunities whichever been identified shall have action plan for those requirements so actions shall be planned to address those risks and opportunities actions shall be planned to address those risks and opportunities so action plan shall be developed to address these risks and opportunity so over here what i wish to say that every process whichever you have identified in process interaction shall have a risk matrix shall have a risk matrix where you need to identify different risk and opportunities and obviously whenever you have identified your risk and opportunities you have to ensure that actions are planned to address those risk and opportunities actions are planned to address those risk and opportunity so risk analysis shall be performed and whenever you are having risk and opportunities also shall have action plan to address those risk and opportunities okay process interaction is basically something kind of a document where you are getting input from your customer then how it has interaction in your organization i'm just giving a simple example pankaj you have got an inquiry from customer so who got that inquiry it is basically marketing say marketing now marketing has given that information to design and development so nothing but interaction is design and development from marketing there was an interaction with customer for inquiry now that interaction has moved to your design and development from design and development they would basically develop that process and they will procure that material so they may have some interaction with purchase and then uh, product, with production where execute they will have trial and finally they will hand it over to production then production is having some interaction with support process like store where material is being kept material is being kept from that area material is now issued to production production has produced that part and from production it has reached to quality they had verified after quality it has reached to dispatch area and from dispatch area it has again gone to customer so something like that we can have a basically requirement which can be referred as so all departments including customer supplier and outsource process wherever being identified being referred as process interaction chart okay pankaj is it like a rasi chart uh rasi what exactly you mean is uh responsibility authority kind of chart i won't say it is rasi chart although you can have similar but it is having basically customer to customer and then you have an organization and you have outsource processes so wherever those uh, let me let me have some uh, in the meantime i'll find and will try to show during the presentation itself i'll show i'll try to show some kind of process interaction during uh, discussion itself okay let me let me uh, move to next part where exactly we are going to discuss about that iatf standard has mentioned now if we see this requirement which i had identified in this slide actually part of iso 9001 iatf has specifically demanded something more something more iatf standard has mentioned so whenever you are doing the risk analysis whenever you are doing risk analysis you shall include lessons learned from these issues nothing but product recalls product audits field returns repairs complaints scrap rework so nothing but standard has mentioned that whatever experience data you have whatever experience data you have and from those experiences whatever you have learned actually whatever you have learned actually shall be included in your risk analysis now i'll ask a very simple question i'll ask a very simple question 
so in case if there is some customer complaint or some kind of warranty issue or some kind of feel written do you verify your tfmea document tfmea tfmea nothing but process failure mode and effects and this is so answer shall be yes answer shall be yes standards is demanding the same that whenever you have something significant which has affected your organization so then whatever lessons you have learned from that issue significant happening shall be included in risk analysis as per iatf standard just would like to mention wherever risk analysis term is used they have mentioned in bracket such as fmea such as fmea so that is something being referred okay only just a moment i'll come to that requirement preventive action is again demanded from standard so as per iatf standard or even iso 9001 standard whatever actions we are planning on risk and opportunities are nothing but preventive action what we mean by preventive action is action taken to eliminate causes of a potential non conformity to prevent their occurrence so nothing but non conformity has not occurred non conformity can occur it has potential that it can occur so you are preventing occurrence you are preventing occurrence and to prevent that occurrence we have to basically eliminate the causes so whatever causes being eliminated to prevent occurrence of a potential non conformity being referred as preventive action right so uh, that is there now i'll come to the requirement murli has asked about product and process audit with example and as an auditor what i should check for both audit okay product audit is basically kind of an audit where we are more focusing on product requirements okay product is good labeling is good packaging is good identification is good right because it generally being performed as a reverse audit as a reverse audit you pick the product from your fg area from where you are planning to dispatch from fg area you had picked and identified a batch and you are verifying whether the inspection testing at different areas were performed as per the requirement right so that is being referred as product audit so it is reverse process audit is basically to verify the effectiveness of your manufacturing processes process audit is being re re referred as uh that where we are verifying the effectiveness of your manufacturing processes that you will have a good output you will have a good output nothing but you will have a good product so it is more focusing on process requirement if your fmea being followed in your uh, processes if your control plan is being followed in your organization if your control plan is having some specification related to process whether the same specification can be seen in your work instructions at work station whether the work instructions are having the similar uh, and sorry uh, the the machines are set as per the work instruction operators are skilled something being verified with respect to control plan and fmea being referred as process audit okay so process audit shall have more focus on fmea and control plan verification and product audit will have more focus on okay packaging is correct labeling is correct and moreover when it comes to the requirement with respect to the other uh, aspect of product being verified then uh, uh, share ppt okay risk analysis include entire supply chain entire supply chain uh, automotive supply chain you mean to say automotive supply chain then uh, i would say uh, yes you can include but it is more focusing on process being performed by organization so you need to ensure that risk analysis is focusing all of your processes pnp audit can be performed referring control plan yes it is basically uh, no, ma'am we would be sharing it no issues okay automotive supply no 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 i i won't say that okay you can ask the uh, risk analysis of uh, or you have to perform risk analysis of your outsource process no i'm not going to ask i'm not going to ask risk analysis of uh, your suppliers as organization you have to focus on your area where you are focusing on product requirements okay now 
contingency plan is being demanded when it comes to a standard. So what we mean by contingency plan, it is basically kind of a backup plan for emergency situations, backup plan for emergency situations. And those emergency situations have been identified in standard, but those are not that, okay, we have to limit to those. We can have more, those, more than those, more than those. So the different emergencies identified in IATF standard are being referred as labor shortage, utility interruptions, key equipment failures, fire, recurring natural disasters, loss of your infrastructure, <laughs> then supplier issues, two more I'm referring, which you won't find in IATS standard, which you won't find in IATS standard, but if you are not having contingency plan for those emergencies, so then definitely and definitely you would be given a known conformity for that. Known conformity for that. Which are those two emergency situations? First, I would like to tell. First one is pandemics. First one is being referred as pandemics. Another being referred as cyber attack on IT services, cyber attack on IT services. So being referred as that, okay, these two also shall be part of your contingency plan. Now, I've mentioned that these are mandatory to be included, mandatory to be included. So why I'm referring that, okay, this need to be included is that then IATF publish another document, which is being referred as, which is being referred as, SIs, which has been referred as SIs. SIs means sanctioned interpretations. Sanctioned interpretations. Right? So sanctioned interpretations being published by IATF are mandatory to be included by organization are mandatory to be included by the organization so it is mandatory that whatever being mentioned in si whatever being mentioned in si shall be referred while implementing of implementation of iatf and where you can find these sanction interpretation the biggest question is that yes, Bankaj, I'm answering to that. Just a moment. I've mentioned one website. This is official website of IATF, which I've mentioned in uh, chat option. IATF Global Oversight dot org. If you'll go to this website, if you'll go to this website, there would be different tabs. There would be one tab being referred as IATF 16949. You have to just click on that and then there would be a drop down menu. There would be a drop down menu where this would be written. Where this would be written. SIs. Now you have to go to that website, then IATF 16949 tab need to be opened, then SIs need to be clicked. And once you'll click SI, it will ask language, and then you have to just uh, different PDFs. You can download it from there. Okay. So these are basically these are basically part of contingency plan demanded by SIs, sanctioned interpretation. Now this is a most common non-conformity because. What is happening that we used to refer IATF standard. Many a times we are not referring to SIs. So it is mandatory that you are understanding about those SIs because those are change points to the standard requirements. Those are something, something like kind of revision to standard, something like changes to your standard. So it is mandatory for us to use SIs with IATF standard, with IATF standard. Now, IATU standard says that you have to make it mandatory that contingency 
plan shall be tested shall be verified so we have to verify the contingency plan defined by us and the example for that testing or verification is given as simulation method simulation so something like mock drill something like mock drill shall be performed by us to see whether the contingency plan which we have identified is good to address our requirements and it will basically help us actually if this emergency will happen right so simulation shall be performed something like mock drill you can refer then standard says that contingency plan shall be reviewed by cft at least once in a year and this cft shall be part of this cft shall be part of no, sorry uh, sorry top management shall be part of cft so contingency plan shall be reviewed within one year at least once in a year by a cft which shall include top management right so there shall be a review of your contingency plan and who shall review it it is basically management including cft so that's why i had mentioned in slide that you can consider that this is an input for mrn this is input as for mrn so easiest rather if you are having a different discussion you are having a different meeting you can go ahead with it or you can include as a part of your management review meeting right then the standard says that we shall identify our quality objectives we shall identify our quality objectives so when it comes to quality objectives those shall be identified and those quality objectives those quality objectives shall be consistent with your quality policy those quality objectives shall be consistent with your quality policy so it shall not be that quality policy is going in different direction quality objectives are going in different direction so we have to ensure that quality objectives are actually derived from quality policy you have to ensure that <coughs> sorry then standard has demanded that whatever changes can affect to quality management system and its effectiveness shall be identified and those changes shall be planned for their action so nothing but the standard has demanded that changes shall be identified with those changes whatever potential consequences can happen shall be identified based on that we need to ensure that resources are available and we have to allocate responsibility and authority to act on those change requirement so nothing but it is basically something related to change management where we need to have a plan for changes plan for changes so planning of changes basically being demanded in case of clause number 7 standard has demanded different key requirement the first requirement is that resources shall be available resources shall be available if your organization is having resources then only you would be able to implement the requirements so resources shall be made available if you have resources then only you would be able to implement effective quality management so resources shall be identified and planned and shall be available then only you would be able to implement effective quality management effective quality management requirement right another requirement is basically being referred as that we need to perform msa we need to perform msa and when it comes to msa requirement measurement system analysis standard in, in standard itself that we are actually expected to use msa manual msa manual so that shall be used when it comes to msa and whatever test equipment you have identified in your control panel shall be basically verified when it comes to msa so msa need to be performed measurement system analysis you might have seen grr r results bias linearity kind of different requirements so nothing but msa is expected to be performed by organization then there is another requirement that standard has demanded that we have to have a mandatory procedure for calibration so another requirement where mandatory procedure is demanded that is calibration requirement so an organization shall have 
proper calibration or verification records uh, msa manual is published by it is published by aiag uh, though the, the it need to be basically purchased it need to be purchased uh, there are different uh, standard bookshops where exactly you can obtain it okay so calibration shall be performed another is uh, we can use either internal laboratory or external laboratory organization is okay with that. Oh, so, sorry, standard is okay with that. The only thing is, if you are having an internal laboratory, then there shall be a documented lab scope. There shall be a documented to calibration of all measuring instruments are being used. Calibration or verification. Calibration or verification. Right, already standard has mentioned calibration or verification. Okay, Murli. So internal lab shall have documented lab scope. So we can have a laboratory scope defined by us, and that would be mandatory to have if you are having internal laboratory. Another is uh, external laboratory. External laboratory is basically where exactly standard has demanded that laboratory shall be accredited to ISO oblique IEC 17025. Nothing but in India, uh, uh, which is part of QCI is equivalent to have basically, so external lab shall have NABL accreditation. External lab shall have NABL accreditation, which is nothing but ISO oblique IEC 17025 requirement. Jojo has asked uh, what is the purpose of this webinar. So, understanding automotive quality management for implementation, which has been mentioned uh, as a topic itself. Okay. So you can just check uh, topic name as well. Now, <clears throat> another requirement being demanded that is that we shall have kind of a process where competency of Personals are being ensured. So whenever you are having different person, we need to ensure those are competent enough. Those are competent enough. And for that requirement, even standard has demanded that we shall have a mandatory process. So for training activity, we need to have a mandatory procedure. For training activity, we need to have a mandatory TNI means training need identification. So we need to have a procedure for training need identification and for training activity to ensure that people working with organization are competent, right? Actually, NABL is providing ISO oblique IEC 17025 accreditation, okay? In India, NABL is an agency who is providing ISO oblique IEC 17025 accreditation, okay? So uh, another requirement is standard has demanded that internal auditors, whether it is system auditor, whether it is process auditor, whether it is product auditor, shall also be competent, shall also be competent. And again, to evaluate competency of internal auditors, to evaluate competency of internal auditor, we need to have a mandatory procedure. We need to have a mandatory process. So make sure you have a mandatory procedure. And I've already mentioned, for system auditor, for process auditor, for product auditor, different competencies identified in standard need to be ensured, right? Then standard has demanded that even the auditors who are doing second party audits, even the auditors who are doing second party audits are competent. Nothing but second party auditor over here, we can easily refer as supplier auditors supplier auditors so supplier auditors who are doing audits on behalf of your organization of your suppliers need to be competent so competency requirements for second party auditors have been defined in standard right another requirement is that we have to have a mandatory procedure for employee motivation and empower empowerment so for employee motivation and empowerment we need to have mandatory procedure. We need to have a mandatory procedure. So that is again another requirement which has been given in seventh section. Then standard has demanded that our documents and records shall be appropriately controlled. Our documents and records shall be appropriately 
control. And over here, they have specifically demanded a document being referred as quality manual. So if you compare with ISO 9001, ISO 9001 has not demanded any kind of quality manual this time. But when it comes to IATF, they have brought back this requirement that we need to have a mandatory document referred as quality manual. Referred as quality manual, so quality manual shall be documented. And it is having four key requirements. If we compare it with TS16949, TS used to have three key requirements. In this version, they have identified four key requirements. Only yes, uh, if additional requirement of second party auditors are known to internal auditor, then yes, they can, they can. So ideally, best is, uh, just wish to tell you, internal auditors need to have system auditor. Internal auditor need to have system auditor need to have five competencies. And in case of second party auditor, ideally there are seven requirements. There are seven. Those five being there in system auditor, similar. Then they have two additional requirements. Nothing but one is being referred as understanding of organization specific requirement, and another being referred as understanding of manufacturing processes to be audited. If that knowledge is with internal auditor, they are allowed to go for second party auditor. Okay. Then quality manual is mandated to have, and those are there are four key requirements. Four key requirements which shall be included, which shall be included. First one is scope, exclusion, and its justification. Scope, exclusion, and its justification. The second one is reference of procedures. Third one is process interaction chart. And fourth one is CSR matrix, CSR matrix. So that shall be part of your this requirement. So quality manual is having four key requirements. If those are identified in one document, can be referred as quality manual. Now standard has asked that we need to define retention policy. We need to define retention policy. And when we are defining retention policy, standard has mentioned that you need to refer customer requirements customer specific requirement, you need to refer legal requirements. And additionally, they have mentioned for PPAP, for tooling change and kind of requirement, we need to have a retention of product life plus service life plus one year. Product life plus service life plus one year. So documents like which are, which are part of PPAP, tooling and kind of requirements shall be retained for product life plus service life plus one year. Okay. Then uh, standard has demanded that for engineering specification changes and review and implementation, the organization shall have a mandatory procedure. Uh, Murli, I would say that best is to have some kind of examination, some kind of examination. But since standard has not mentioned that, okay, which method need to be adopted by organization, so you have liberty, you have some kind of liberty. But I wish to tell during audit, during audit, auditor can verify this requirement by their own. So even if you are having record that, okay, these are competent, these are competent, still those can be questioned and auditor can give a non-conformity. So please, you have to have a real method by which you can actually evaluate competency. So to me, some kind of examination method or experience capturing data, okay? If we have more than 10 OEMs, then how to make this retention policy? How to make retention policy for each customer? Now, if your retention policy is different, so consider the highest one. Consider the highest one. Like I already mentioned, in case of Maruti, they have written as 11 years. In, in case of Honda, they have written as 20 years. Say in case of other customer, they have mentioned 25 years. So if we define retention policy as 25 years for that particular record, requirements of Maruti, Honda, and other customer would be addressed. Right? 
okay witnessing other auditor by lead auditor yes experience capturing data so that is something experience nothing but during audit you need to see whether actually those requirements are being used by them during audit so that something is a good idea uh, which mr kk has identified right okay anyhow uh, let's come back to the requirements so engineering specifications implement uh, uh, shall be implemented and when it comes to there need to be a mandatory procedure for that and for engineering specification there is one key requirement which i would like to mention that if there is any change then that change shall should be reviewed then change should be reviewed within 10 working days within 10 working days so engineering changes should be reviewed for 10 working days now there is clause number 8 which asks for some key requirement which are something like first one is that you have to go for project planning you have to go for some kind of project planning and whenever you are having some kind of project planning you have to ensure that confidentiality is agreed with the customer so you have to agree with your customer that the confidentiality would be maintained confidentiality would be maintained so to address this requirement i would say for project planning that there is a tool available to us there is a tool available to us and that is being referred as apqp so to address that requirement which being referred as project planning or project management we can use apqp advanced product quality planning right then the second requirement which i would like to mention that is related to that we need to perform manufacturing feasibility analysis whenever we are getting some kind of query whenever we are getting some kind of query we need to perform manufacturing feasibility assessment and that feasibility assessment will include two different requirement one is capacity another one is capability so capacity and capability shall be evaluated along with it i would just like to mention the requirements stated by customer and the requirement mentioned on product design shall be understood shall be reviewed shall be discussed among the team so nothing but there can be some recycling requirement there can be some environmental impacts those shall be identified when it comes to you are reviewing your product requirements you are reviewing your product requirement then uh, contract review shall be performed contract review means nothing but the customer is giving you a contract agreement right so before agreeing on that you need to review the requirements stated in contract stated in contract are correct and if there is any ambiguity need to be resolved so that needs to be performed so nothing but contract review shall be performed contract review shall be performed the organization shall use design and development uh, so sorry the organization shall have a mandatory procedure for design and development there shall be a mandatory procedure for design and development and this procedure shall focus on error prevention rather than detection so standard as demanded that we shall follow actually a process where prevention is focused rather than detection prevention is being focused rather than detection so that shall be there then whenever you are going for design and development planning i would say you can use apqp as a key requirement you can use apqp as a key requirement then you have to identify what are the inputs required for your product design what are the inputs required for process design and whatever the special characteristics are shall be identified by the organization to implement those requirement we need to have kind of controls with us we need to have controls with us for design and development controls are defined into three categories one is design and development review another one is design and development verification and design and development validation and when it comes to design and development validation it says there are two key requirement which can be performed by organization one being referred as prototype program and another being referred as ppap production part approval process so organization shall have a kind of a process where production part shall be approved right and once you have an approval then only you can go for mass production of that requirement so that is how we can specify this requirement if there is any design change that even need to be controlled so that is focusing basic, that is being focused so when it comes to 
eight crores it is having marketing related requirement nothing but contract review and manufacturing feasibility kind of requirement then you have formed a team and you are performing apqp in case of 8.3 crores once that is done then it says that externally provided processes product and services shall be controlled by national nothing but it is more which is focusing on supplier controlling more focusing on outsourced process controlling nothing but job work controlling so service provider controlling so that is being demanded over here so we have to have a process for supplier controlling we have to have a process for supplier controlling and then it needs to have basically four different procedure which i would like to mention you can write uh, mention in uh, if you are uh, recording somewhere you can mention it we need to have four different procedure first one is that we need to have a procedure for supplier selection where we have identified evaluation and reevaluation of suppliers second requirement is that we need to have a mandatory procedure for control of outsourced processes so how we are going to control our outsourced processes also shall have a mandatory procedure third one is mandatory procedure for supplier Uh, sorry uh, the the products supplied by customer having some legal requirement so how those legal requirement would be verified and controlled shall have a mandatory procedure and fourth one is that we need to have a supplier monitoring procedure supplier monitoring means we need to have a supplier rating evaluation we need to have a supplier rating evaluation that is something customer recommended supplier should be audited or not so i would say once customer has recommended any supplier you have to consider them for even supplier auditing so yes supplier audit shall be performed on customer recommended suppliers as well okay pankaj another requirement where exactly i wish to discuss that is controlling of your production and to control your production activity there are seven key requirement which have been identified one is that you need to make a control plan and you have to ensure that control plan is being implemented in your uh, manufacturing processes second one is you have to have standardized work instruction and over there standard has mentioned that standard work instruction shall be understood so it shall be in a language which is understood by operator so preferably in local language or some kind of visual standards third one is we need to verify our job setup so nothing but setup approval is being demanded another one is that we need to verify after shutdown shutdown means it can be planned shutdown it can be unplanned shutdown planned shutdown means like maruti and honda kind of companies used to have uh, okay in june and uh, in december they used to basically shut down their plant for one week or 10 days so that is basically planned shutdown unplanned shutdown is something like breakdown so after breakdown or after shutdown we need to verify that okay manufacturing process is giving us consistent product quality so that needs to be verified once that is done then we need to have a process for maintenance we need to have a process for maintenance and total productive maintenance as a term being used standard has mentioned that maintenance shall have maintenance objective and there are four different objective are given as an example given as an example and those are mttr mean time to repair mtbf mean time between failures oee overall equipment effectiveness and last but not the least preventive maintenance schedule adherence so that are kind of requirement being mentioned in total productive maintenance then standard has demanded that we need to ensure that production tooling is also controlled managed by us and last but not the least that schedules shall be made to control our production activities so ppc production planning and control is another being demanded when it comes to the requirement right another is basically we have to have proper identification and traceability control system we need to ensure that customer properties are being controlled by us and if there is any uh, damage how we are going to notify to customer shall be identified with us then preservation of material shall be ensured by us so preservation nothing but storage and inventory requirement is another being demanded when it comes to this section uh another requirement is that you need to control all of your changes control of changes being demanded so we can generally be referring this requirement as something like 4m change management so if you are having something related to 4m change management that requirement can be adopted over here 
4M chain management. The only thing is, as per IAP standard, I can refer that changes can be referred as two type of changes. One is permanent change, another one is a temporary change. So a change which is not again uh, going to be used by us, that means it will remain in process permanent. And there is a kind of a process that something has happened with your regular process for some time you have adopted some alternative method and then once your <coughs> regular process will come back to the shape then you'll switch back to that is being referred as temporary so standard has demanded that any change whether it is permanent or temporary shall be controlled by our organization so we have to have a mandatory procedure for even permanent changes we have to have a mandatory procedure for temporary changes control then standard says that products shall be released in a proper way so nothing but quality related requirements are being defined in this clause where exactly they had mentioned that layout inspection functional testing shall be performed we need to have a proper uh, resource for appearance item inspection appearance item inspection for appearance item inspection you might require some kind of lux value you might need some kind of reference sample those, those shall be available when it comes to verification of appearance item then standard has demanded that we need to verify even externally provided items nothing but supplier provided products or job work provided products shall be verified by us then we have to ensure that legal requirements are being confirmed by us and then definitely we shall have an acceptance criteria for uh, quality so that something is required in another requirement standard has demanded that we need to control our known confirming products we need to control our known confirming product and for known confirming to product controlling it is identified as that we need to identify that product and shift to the some separate location so that it does not get mixed up with the regular products right then if we can use that material if we can use that material then you have to obtain concession nothing but deviation so deviation approval shall be obtained if that deviation is not available that means we cannot use as is we cannot use as is that means we can perform rework if rework is to be performed we need to have a mandatory procedure for rework then standard says if rework is not possible you can perform repair as well you can perform repair as well but again for repair you need to have a mandatory procedure and another key requirement is that before performing repair customer approval shall be performed yes sure of you can customer approval shall be obtained before performing repair activities so repair karne se pehle we have to have a, uh, a mandatory customer approval for that if man product cannot be reworked or repaired then you can dispose it by scrap method where exactly you would be requiring to have a mandatory procedure so it is basically more of controlling of your known confirming or output so that it shall not reach to your customer then in case of ninth section it is more demanded that you need to control your manufacturing process so you have to have a monitoring and measurement of your manufacturing process and when you are monitoring and when you are doing monitoring and measurement of your manufacturing process it shall use a statistical tool so spc is promoted spc is promoted when it comes to this requirement another is that customer satisfaction also shall be monitored when it comes to iatf it has demanded that we shall basically have performance related customer satisfaction analysis so customer satisfaction can be perception analysis can also Uh, so sorry shall i also include performance analysis so basically performance related data also shall be included when it comes to your measuring customer satisfaction how is your delivery performance how is your quality performance how is your premium freight uh, uh, how, how much premium freight incidents are there uh, what what about the customer notification if it is there in terms of customer complaint or warranty issue or maybe fifth one is being referred as line disruption issues so five issues are being referred part of customer satisfaction one is quality another is delivery third one is premium freight fourth one is customer notification including uh, warranty and uh, field failures and fifth one is uh, basically line disruption okay uh, then another requirement is where exactly internal audit is being demanded internal audit is basically being referred as 
that we need to have three type of audit one is system audit another one is process audit and third one is product audit and we have to have a schedule for those audits and one requirement which i would like to mention that whenever you are performing process audit you have to ensure that shift changeovers is covered shift changeover is covered so we have to have system audit we have to have process audit we have to have product audit and these three audits shall be performed as per their schedule then we need to perform management review and for management review there are different inputs are given uh dharmraj uh, customer satisfaction which was mentioned in previous requirement was of iso 9001 where exactly perception was discussed in supplemental requirement that is iatf additional requirement which has demanded that okay performance measurement shall be done yeah, i can understand harish there is a requirement because we have to cover the training program in time okay so management review is something where exactly management review inputs have been identified and standard and we have to ensure that management review is being performed at least once in a year at least once in a year so management review frequency is at least once in a year it shall be performed right another one is 10th uh, clause where Uh, we have to have a non conformity and corrective action being defined and when it comes to corrective action it is being referred as actions taken to eliminate actions taken to eliminate causes of a non conformity to prevent its reoccurrence so we have to eliminate causes so that recurrence can be ensured so a recurrence can be uh, prevented recurrence can be prevented and when it comes to this requirement Standard IATF has made mandatory that problem solving techniques shall be used. Problem solving techniques shall be used, which shall focus on containment, which shall focus on root cause, which shall focus on uh, corrective action planning, as well as horizontal deployment. So problem solving shall be do uh, available as a mandatory procedure. then iatf standard has demanded that we shall have a mandatory procedure for error proofing methodologies so error proofing is also part of procedure requirement where we need to include that and please make sure error proofings are identified in your control plan and fmea kind of document so you have to ensure that you have a very good linkage with control plan and fmea with respect to error proofing right uh pankaj i won't use uh, this as a requirement tool and techniques are basically similar word uh, replaced with many a times people use a tool many times it being referred as technique so i'm not going by that term okay <clears throat> then organization shall have a warranty management system documented with them if warranty is applicable with the organization if you are getting your products returned from line uh, sorry customer or from field then you have to analyze those products so it is being referred as that customer returned and field returned products shall be analyzed and an additional requirement is that we have to have a mandatory procedure for continual improvement so we have to have a mandatory procedure for continual right so this is about basically 10th clause where exactly standard has demanded few key requirement related to corrective actions as well as continual improvement so this is about uh, section requirement which we have just covered so standard is over now over to each and every one who is having any query and wish to ask something <clears throat> Uh, IPQC consulting has our RCF and your control plan, etc. So these are basically part of your uh, different key requirement being demanded. Yes. <laughs> Okela, ma'am, can comment on uh, IATF LA program requirement? Yeah, LA program we are not doing. Actually, the uh, organization which are associated with us, such as CI and others, you may visit to our website. Uh, the detail of the organization who all are doing this LA program, uh, you will find on our website only. And yes, for the internal audit training program on the topic, uh, we will organize it same after receiving your feedback. So uh, I think uh, if you have any questions, so you can write to me or directly to Nitin sir also. 
uh, on the, his email ID. So before we end this training program, uh, on behalf of uh, NBQP, QCI, I would like to extend my sincere thank, thanks to Nitin sir for sharing insight of IATF 169 uh, and ISO 9001 2015. I hope it was useful and informative to all. Uh, once again, thanks to all the participants. We hope the training objective has uh, been fulfilled. Uh, we are expecting that the learning from this webinar or implemented practice in your organization. In case of any other uh, training needs uh, for your organization, you can reach us. Uh, you can, uh, if you have uh, still have a question, you can uh, send uh, send it to me directly. And now I am requesting my IT person to give access to the camera and the uh, mic also, so that people can ask the question, uh, and we can have a group photograph. That, that's uh, the photograph we are going to publish on our social media. And regarding this certificate also, uh, like we are not uh, giving any certificate for this uh, webinar, but yes, when we are, we will organize a training program, full day training program. And then in that, uh, that time, we will uh, definitely share, send the uh, certificate. And for PPT, it is solely depending upon the, uh, like, like after receiving consent from the uh, faculty, we will uh, share the PPT uh, of the program. So that is totally depending upon the the, the, uh, the consent of uh, Nitin sir, Nitin Vodra sir. And uh, now uh, uh, you may turn off your on your camera so that we can take a group picture. Thank you uh, so Shalesh much. Has, Shalesh has written question. So you, uh, Shalesh might have some question. Yeah, Shalesh, what is the question? Thank you so much. Very good. Uh, so, Shalish, you can, uh, sir, uh, can you read it out? I'm not able to find the Shalish. He has just I written know. question. Shalish has just written as question. So, I'm not sure, but uh, his query is actually. Okay, okay, okay. So, that uh, Shalish, if still you have any question, you can send it directly to me because we are having, uh, you know, a sort of time now. So uh, now uh, Mukesh, please turn off the camera so that we can take the photograph. Group photograph, please. I'm requesting all the participants to please turn on your camera. Camera is allowed, ma'am. Yeah, camera is allowed. So now you can turn on your camera and uh, Mukesh, please take one uh, group photograph. I'm also trying to, uh, from my side also. So, Shalish, sir, if you have any question, please write to me. Otherwise, you can unmute your mic and you can ask the question. Shalish ji. Uh, sir, please stop sharing. Your skin is shared. Hello. Yeah, thank I'm you. audible. Yes, 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 you are able. Yeah. Yeah, the, my question is. So, who is this? Please introduce yourself and then you ask your question. Who is this? Yeah, this is, this is Dr. Shalish from Nakur. Yeah, yeah, please go ahead, Shalish. Sir. Yeah, it is regarding the contingency plan. So what is the difference between the contingency plan, uh, plan as per QMS and as per ITF, actually? Is there any difference between making the contingency plan as per QMS requirements and ITF requirements? See, uh, in ISO 9001, there is no contingency plan kind of requirement is given. In IATF specifically, contingency plan as a term is used and they have demanded a contingency plan. Contingency plan is a very simple term where exactly we can refer it as a backup plan for emergency situation. That how we are going to ensure that uh, customer will not affect. So that is something we can refer to. Yes, sir. Okay, okay. Actually, uh, we're getting uh, some uh, issues related to the contingency plan. So every minute thing has to be written. The auditor always says. Uh, if you you uh, have uh, been audited for IATF, and if either you if you are going for IATF standard, I must tell you the most frequent non-conformity nowadays is contingency planning. So this is the most frequent non-conformity being raised by auditors nowadays. Yes, sir. And therefore, only I ask the question only. <laughs> right, right. Thank you.
right okay thank you thank you yes yeah. somebody also had uh, any example for iatf related contingency situation uh contingency situation have been referred as just i'm, I'm giving you example it is basically some there is one particular equipment which is uh, having kind of with you and if it uh, uh, ha is having kind of breakdown issue then how you are going to ensure that customer line will not stop if there is utilities like dg set is uh, basically having problem how you are going to ensure that customer line is not affected so kind of contingency situations are there fire is mentioned over there recurring natural disaster is mentioned over there so that is there it's so, okay, okay. Uh, people are referring that camera is disabled uh, mukesh please enable the camera hello mukesh Hello, Mukesh. Am I audible to you? So, thank you so much. Uh, that's all from Quality Council of India. Thank you to the all the participants and faculty once again, and uh, hope to see you soon. Uh, with a new topic, and uh, for we are also, as I mentioned, in the chat box also. that we are going to organize today study program so if you like this session or if you want to have a, a detailed session training program then please uh, do share your feedback and the same has been shared on your uh, registered email id as well thank you it team involved in the webinar so that's all from qci uh, bye for now thanks a lot thank you thank you